Well, hello and welcome once again to New Beginning in Christ Ministries. I'm glad you joined us today and we're looking forward to the program today. Praise God. We're going to be talking about apostasy uh, Mm -hmm. because the Bible talks about apostasy a lot. And what is apostasy? It's the falling away. And folks, let me tell you, the United States, Christians, professing Christians are falling away by the thousands. And we're near the end of time. Praise God. So we're going to be talking about that. you got some folks you want to say hello I to? I do. You know, I had Wilbur on my heart today. I want to say hi to you. You're out of flipping. I hope you're watching the show, and I hope you're feeling better. Praise the Lord. Now, the group that we're featuring today is mm. Southern Faith. Uh, praise God. These folks are over uh, at Calico Rock, uh, just out of uh, Mountain Home, Twin Mountain Home and Mountain View. Praise well, God. Brother Wade, Pastor Wade and Taffy, mostly. Yeah. And Jerry and uh, uh, Willie. Oh, yeah, uh, Willie. Don't forget Willie Ming. Praise God. He's a <laughs> tremendous piano player, and you're going to be blessed. But more than anything, I want you to listen to his testimony. Praise God. Because in his testimony, he talks about how God miraculously healed him. Praise God. Oh, yeah. You're going to be blessed by this. Praise God. And you, folks, God is still alive and well right here, and he's taking care of those who dare to believe. Praise God. Let me ask you, do you dare to believe today? Praise God. We'll be right back, and we're going to have these folks on singing. Yes, you got something? We mentioned they were out of Calico Rock. Yeah, the Calico Rock between Mountain Home and Mountain yeah, View. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Somewhere in between there, down there Highway are. 5. There they are. Wherever <laughs> that is, praise God. Okay. They're going to be singing for you. You will be blessed. We'll be right back after they get through singing. God bless you. We, we sang that 
it a little while and got no response to it at all and almost took it out of the program. Mm -hmm. And we went to a church one night and I'm telling you, now, did you ever have one of those looks, Brother David, where they come in and cross their arms and look at you and say, I dare you to bless them. Yeah. Many others have tried. Yeah. Yeah. And we was there and we thought, well, we've tried everything else. Let's pull that old song out and all of a sudden they loosen up and let their hair down. And, you know, for me, that's an exciting thing. When I get my hair down. And, and it just, it's just a fun song. Let's do a little bit of 24 hours. His mom and dad came to Timbo down to the old church down there and preached revival down there. Some of y'all may, may remember Brother Mean back in those days. This is Brother Willie Mean right here on the piano. 
Well, son, wait, Mosier, and I'll be your MC host tonight, I guess you might say, or MC Pest, whatever you would like to call it. One of the two, I'm not sure, but I'm thrilled to be here in Timbo in the church here, and I'm just glad to see what God has done Amen. here in the church. Brother David and I have been friends so many years, and I'm ashamed to say that, you know, because I don't know how many years it's been. That's <laughs> really what I'm saying. So, but anyway, I, I want to share with you, this song we're going to do for you is a fairly new song for us. I'm not sure we've only done it once or twice out anywhere. But I love the words of this song because it took me a long time to learn what the power of God's grace means. We go through our lives and, and experiences and making mistakes and different things. And many times we begin to feel like it's God just waiting for us to make that mistake. Then God shows us something in His Word. He said, you know what? I love you more than you understand. And it's called grace. It's unmerited favor. You can't earn it. It's given by the blood of Jesus. And the first time I heard this song, I called my wife. I received it in the radio station. By the way, y'all need to turn 91.5 FM. I'm on there Monday through Friday. So I can bug you five days a week. But the first time I heard this song, I called my wife and said, you got to hear this song. I said, it wasn't released as a single on the CD, but I love the message in this song. Because it simply says, I know something about grace. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you,
man, this dumb got too good in here too early. Hallelujah. I'm going to change your program up if you're all ready. Program's going to be me today. I'm telling you, I, I love this song. How many years ever had a dream that they knew came from God? That God spoke to you in a dream? This is an old song, but it talks about a dream of heaven. It's been a few years ago now, but one night I was in it, having a dream. And I've been praying that night and reading my word and, and said, God, I'd just like to get a bitch. Of what you've got in store. Now I realize I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the Father has in store. But it's all right to say, God, can you show me just a little bit of something? And I went to sleep reading my Bible. And that night, I dreamed by the day that I was at the largest old fashioned Rush Harbor meeting I'd ever been in my life. They had tables set out there as far as you could see. The food just as far as you could see on the table. And the leaves on this brush arbor were almost transparent gold. The color was elusive. And people were excited and they were running around and different things and talking and like you do at a family reunion. And I went up to somebody and I don't know who they was, but I asked them, I said, what is everybody so excited about? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he said, haven't you heard? Jesus is coming. Thank you. And the worship began to break out in praise. And, and I woke up. And I thought, no. No. no, no, no. And if it's just a touch of what God has. Brother, I wouldn't miss heaven for this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dreamed of a city called glory. It was so But I said I want to 
I'm going to share this a real great testimony. Let me tell you what I told the guys before we started. First of all, let you, I'm going to let you know that nobody's really in charge here tonight, okay? God's in charge. And I told them, I said, no matter what you do, I want you to obey the Lord. If somebody feels led to come in the middle of one song, whatever, whatever it is, right now is the time to come. Obey the Lord. It's God's house, God's time, His place. It's all about Him. Amen. I share with you about, I don't know, I guess maybe it's been over a year now, a year ago last November, I think. We were headed to Tulsa, Oklahoma to do a singing. A few days before we left, I, I had had some tests run on my back. And they were looking at that time, we'd probably have to do back surgery, to do some back surgery. I had nine discs in my back that were have to repair. So they went in and did some tests and different things. We had gone to Tulsa and I received a phone call about an hour before we were going on stage that night in Tulsa. And they told me, they said, we need you to be here in the morning, back in the office, for some more tests. And I said, I can't be there tomorrow. But I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We sing tonight. Uh, Mr. Tomorrow morning. We sing to, tomorrow night and Sunday morning. This whole weekend. We're going through the whole weekend. Well, let me talk to the doctor. I said, the doctor said, well, I want him here Monday morning. Have him come early before the office opens and we'll arrange to have him in here. So I asked him, I said, you know, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I can figure out something's not right because I've been going on with this problem now for several months and all of a sudden you won't be in here now. What's going on? I said, well, we usually don't like to discuss these things over the phone, but this is the situation. We found an image on your liver what we think to be mass on your pancreas and on both of your kidneys I said oh well what are we talking about are we talking about cancer or what are we talking about so we won't know until we do the final results and that was the last word I got that night we sang that night I didn't say anything except to my wife and, and one other friend that was there asked him to pray with me when I told my wife what the doctors had to say, she said, I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm not having that. That night when we went back to Jerry's daughter's house and read a scripture and got ready to go to bed and I'm going to pray, it says as if God said, are you going to give me a chance? Well, how do you answer that? Maybe yes, sir. The next morning we got ready to sing and, and I opened up my heart to the rest of the groups that was there. And they had a special prayer for me and as sure as I'm standing here, maybe you don't believe that God still heals. Well, here's the reason why you're not receiving yours. Because it's like somebody put an ice pack inside my stomach. Amen. I got cold from the inside out. And I went back to the doctor's office that Monday morning. They started running tests. Same people, same office, same place. Amen. And they turned me over this way. They turned me over that way. They rolled me around this way. And the lady said, I don't understand. This doesn't look like the same body that we skin. <laughs> I can't find anything. That's my Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I told her, I said, well, they prayed for me this weekend. And she said, oh, wait just one minute. I want you to go down and see the doctor. And I sat right outside the doctor's office when he received the phone call. And yeah. this is what she said. I'm sending you that preacher that got healed this weekend. Did God take care of that? But I haven't had any more back trouble. I had stomach trouble taking acid pills two or three times a day. 
That is all gone. I eat whatever I want to eat. I sleep all night long, sleep flat. I don't sleep on three pillows anymore. Don't tell me God can't heal. Because I'm here to tell you. But it only comes when we reach a place that we have to have Him. One of the first times we ever sang this song was that night, on that Friday night. So it has a great deal more meaning to me now than it ever has. I want you to listen to this word. Let it touch your heart like it did me. Well, I hope you enjoyed 
Southern faith. They're some of our favorite people. Uh, Brother Wade is pastor there at a church there in Calico Rock. And I know you folks over in that area, praise God, would really enjoy going and being a part with their church and their service. And uh, we travel with them and uh, go all over Arkansas and uh, praise God. Wherever we can. If they're close enough, we're going to go watch them and listen yeah. to them and, and fellowship with them. And people need to go out and, and go to these meetings. They'll be, you'll be so blessed. And what would y'all think about Brother uh, Wade's testimony? Praise God. God awesome. is, like we said before, God is still a healing God. Praise God. And you know, our theme today is talking about apostasy. And that's what's happening in the United States. Well, in the world today, folks, people are falling away from the Lord. Now, recently, we saw in the paper where the United States military, army especially, uh, was telling people that uh, they can't watch the Southern Baptist Convention. They took it off their computers. Uh, let me say this, folks. Uh, our generals don't make decisions for the military. The decisions for the ma- for the military are made uh, by the chief, the commander in chief. The commander in chief is the president of the United States, and all of this is flowing downhill from the presidency. The people that he appointed over the military uh, are denying Christ, and folks, that's a dangerous place for us to be. When I was a young man, went through basic training in 1956, all the way through my military career, through 1989, praise God, it was, we had to have a New Testament in our footlockers, praise God. Look what's happened in these last few years, how the falling away has begun to take place. Well, what is the falling away? Falling away is predicted in the Bible. We're going to read that too over in Second Timothy. So if y'all turn there, Second Timothy, uh, beginning at chapter three and verse one, and we're going to be reading there. Praise God, because the Bible talks about apostasy all the way from the time of Christ through today. The Bible also says that God will send a delusion, and I believe that we're seeing that today uh, when people politically today knowingly will vote for a candidate who supports abortion, who supports uh, homosexuality, homosexuality, uh, who support any other faith other than Christianity. Uh, We have no liberties in this country anymore as Christians, but the Muslims are just taking over. Well, that's Mm -hmm. predicted in Scripture also. Can you fall away? There are some believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. And so those people go out and they do what they pretty much please. But my Bible says that if you're truly a Christian, praise God, a true Christian, you will act like Jesus act. Are you hearing me, folks? That's what Scripture talks about. That's what God talks about. That's what... Jesus talks about, it's what Paul talks about, what all the apostles talk about, is the fact that if you're truly saved, you will change your way of doing. You'll do away with many things which we're going to read about here, praise God. So it is happening today. Our country is falling away from Christianity. We're falling away from helping Jerusalem from helping Israel. And folks, that's a very dangerous place to be. Yes, Praise the is. Lord. And yet, well, we're going to talk some too about end times and when we get into what's going to take place mm-hmm. during the tribulation period and all. Uh, and folks, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm knowing we're going to be out of here when that takes place. I'm not, I, I, I truly believe that if you truly know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're not going to have to worry about falling away because all your thoughts are going to be towards him, towards doing good things, helping your neighbor, and doing the things which Jesus Christ did, reaching out, visiting the sick, uh, laying hands on the sick, visiting the prisoners, the widows, the homeless, praise God, and carrying this scripture out to the world, praise God. Not just sitting on a pew on Sunday. That's not enough to get you to heaven, folks. Sorry, I'm, I'm sure I'm offending some of you. Some of you don't, but don't turn that TV off yet. <laughs> Praise God, because you need to open your eyes 
and do away with the, 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 the itching ear doctrine that's going on in most churches today. So having said that, praise God, you want to make some, you're awful quiet this morning. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. I'll, I'll have something to say, I'm sure. All right, let's go over to Second Timothy uh, chapter 3 and verse 1. And we're going to begin to uh, read there. Praise God. If you would, Sister Carolyn. Okay. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay, let's stop there for just a minute. Praise okay. God. Uh, once again, the apostasy means falling away. Mm-hmm. Now, if you've never been there, you can't fall away. We're not talking to atheists today. We're not talking to agnostics. We're not talking to unbelievers. We're talking to people who profess to be Christians and yet they're falling away from Christianity. The votes that they make for certain political parties support everything that God is against. Part of the the uh, uh, illusion that God said I will send uh, so that you'll believe a lie. Praise God. And that's what's happening, folks. People are believing lies in this country like you wouldn't believe. Politically, this country is so corrupt that if God doesn't bring judgment, then what are we going to do? You know, if we don't bring judgment, then God will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's true. Because we're worse now than Sodom and Gomorrah ever thought about being. Okay, continue with verse 2, please. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Stop right there. Let's talk about some of these, praise God. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Doesn't that, that see that falls under lust? Yeah. And lust, folks, is, is a desire for power. It's a desire for money. It's a desire for sex. It's a Control. desire for uh, for self recognition. Somebody they, you know, and we find that so much in our government because people, our government is supposed to support the will of the people. We are a republic, not a democracy. Uh, in a democracy, the majority rules. We are a republic where the, we have a right to change things and move around. Yet Christianity is being pushed farther and farther and farther back. And the, the, the uh, guarantees in our Constitution to protect us are being done away with, especially by the present regime in Washington. Praise God. Uh, we can read this. And folks... If any of these uh, apply to you, you need to change. Praise God. Listen to what it says. Covetness. That that means a person wants what everybody else, somebody else has. Mm -hmm. Whether it be power, they want the power, they want the good looks, they want the sex, they want this, they want that. It's wanting what somebody else has. Praise God. Not being satisfied with what you have, praise God, but wanting what everybody else has. Praise God. Boasters, oh wow, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Woo! Oh, could we talk about that Hello. forever and ever and ever? Yeah. You know, parents keep telling their children, don't be texting, don't be calling on cell phones and stuff. And yet every day now we're seeing where more and more children are being killed because they're texting while they're driving. You know, so, well, mom and dad don't know anything. You know, and our teachers, especially the professors in college, are teaching apostasy. They're teaching that, well, there's no right or wrong. There's just a gray matter. Uh, If if you enjoy doing it, go do it. That's why we have bombers uh, in Boston who are killing people because Mm -hmm. they just felt like, well, that's what I'm, that's what I want. There was no deterrent to them. No deterrent whatsoever. Can you stop a bomber? No. Let me just be very, no. A dedicated person who is willing to die and will not talk to anybody so that the word gets out against them, you cannot stop that person. They're going to get in. Why? Because they're not afraid. And so if you have nothing to fear, uh, 
If you're getting, what is it, 70 virgins mm -hmm. that you're supposed to get, you know, by dying? Or you're mm -hmm. willing to die for that. They think it's going to be a wonderful place for them. Of course, the awful truth of the matter is they're that right. a split second after they die, they realize their mistake. But now it's too late. And that's what this program's about today, folks. Don't let it be too late for you. Let's continue. Okay, it talks about unthankful unholy that means we hold nothing righteous holy means set aside for the, the use of God praise God God's work. we are to do God's work and if you're not doing God's work you are unholy praise God unthankful we give thanks every day for the things that God has done for folks there you may be think that you're going out and you you're accomplishing things by the use of your strong right arm, but the Bible says you're cursed. If you depend on your strength, not God's, you are messing up. We put our trust in God. Absolutely. Whatever we need, God is able to supply it through Christ Jesus. <laughs> Without natural affection. Folks, when a man has an affection for another man that is unnatural when a woman has affection for another woman that is unnatural friendship is one thing mm -hmm. affection and love is quite quite a different thing right. so when the bible talks about the fact that uh, women with women, men with men, that's not natural, folks. They can say that they were born that way, that that's the way your genes run. No, they became that way. Probably somewhere in their past, somebody has had some kind of a sexual relationship with them, probably as children, and that spirit has gone into them. I, I'm not, I have many friends who were were homosexuals. And they've opened up to us. And, and they, to us they came, yes, and we, we would talk to them and they would go out and try to convince other homosexuals that what they were doing was wrong. Because these people had been healed of AIDS. They said, hey, they're still trying to find a cure for AIDS, but when, when people go out and God heals them, they believe. Mm -hmm. And it changes their life. And they get, well, what's happened when they go out to talk, then the other homosexuals turn their backs on them. Yeah. They treat them as traitors. So no, no uh, sympathy for them. They just treat them as they won't have nothing to do with them. Is it possible to change? Yes, it is. Praise God. Now, listen to what it also says. Truce breakers. You know, a truce breaker, uh, when somebody says, well, I won't do anything to you, and then turns around and does it, you're breaking a truce. Praise God. False accuser, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Folks, you profess Christianity on our streets today. Preach the gospel on the corner and watch what happens. You'll be arrested. You'll have people that will shun you. You'll have people that will laugh at you and that they'll talk to you. Praise God. Folks, and, and many of those who are doing the laughing at you, who are pointing the finger, are professing Christians. And they said, well, I sure am glad that I'm not that way. I go to church on Sunday and I sit there and I'm a good person. You know, I live like the devil the rest of the week. Uh, but on Sunday, I'm a perfect person. So I have a right to point my finger at that person out there uh, who's preaching the gospel of all things out on the corner. Boy, you wouldn't have lasted long around Jesus because that's exactly where Jesus preached the gospel, out on the highways and the byways. Praise God. Uh, traders, heavy-minded, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Lust. Lust. Comes in many forms. Yes, it does. Well, listen, to, read verse 5 for us again. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. See, those, a lot of people say, well, yeah, well, we go to church, but we don't believe in healing. Huh? That's denying the power. That's denying the power of God. Right away. You say, oh, well, that all passed away with the apostles. No, it didn't. God is an unchanging God. God said, I'm the same yesterday, 
today and forever. He said, I change not if God healed before. God is still healing today. And when you deny that healing, then you are apostate. You have fallen away. Praise God. What about uh, uh, prosperity? Do you deny prosperity? Are you, are you just sitting back thinking, well, whatever I've got, that's all I can get, you know? Uh, too much uh, month at the end of the money. I uh, just never seem to have enough. Well, the reason that you don't is because you don't believe God. At least you're not acting on your belief. Praise God. God said, if you can just dare to believe, all things are possible. And they're possible only through Jesus Christ. And let me also say, not through Muhammad, not through Allah. Only through Jesus Christ. As Christians, we need to start taking a stand against false religions. Absolutely. Folks, we need to be burning the Korans in our streets. Be instant in Did you know that President Obama ordered the burning of the King James Bible in Afghanistan, Pakistan, those countries where we have troops trying mm-hmm. to defend them because it was an offense to the Muslims, he had the Bibles burned. Stacked up in piles and burned. And that's what only he, a smidgen of what yeah, he has done. That, that's just the tip of the iceberg. What do you think that the Muslims would have done if they'd have piled up the Korans and loaded them up and burned them? They talk about this young man uh, down in Florida who was going to burn the Koran. The Koran offends me. It, it offends me. So I don't read it. It's against my Jesus. It's, uh, so I don't want it to be around. Praise God. But just why are we burning Bibles? Why are we denying yeah. our military to have Bibles? Why are we selling, cutting off access to Southern Baptist uh, programs and stuff? That's what gets me. It's my turn to speak. Yes, go, come on, baby. It's okay for them to ho- stop traffic in New York so they can pray, yet we're not allowed to pray in public. We have to burn the Bibles, but they don't burn the Korans. I don't, I don't understand this. I don't, we're out over there protecting them, and they're over here killing us. Okay, I've said my piece. Well, here's the thing. A few years ago, if you had been doing the things that they're doing today, you, there would have been such an outcry yeah. in this country, and they would have been kicked out. Uh, but see, the present regimes are not only not against it, they are for it. And they're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Who are they pushing? They're pushing Christians. And you're saying... Well, Brother James, you sound like you're warlike. Well, the Bible, listen. We are fighting a war. We are fighting a war. Now, do you think God doesn't get angry and destroy people by the thousands? There's coming a day of judgment. There's coming a day of judgment. God's been holding back. But let me tell you something. When that trumpet blows, and those true, professing, believing Christians are taken out, you're not going to believe what's going to happen. And if you're left behind, mm. you're not going to make it. You just simply aren't going to make it. And you, let me also be very clear. You ain't going to heaven either because you've denied Christ. The very judgment of the rapture will let you know that you truly denied Christ. Praise God. That's Let's, hard. Yes, it is. It's hard, but it's the God truth. God has called us to be Listen, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Listen to the instruction. From such, turn away. Run from those people. Get away from them. They will destroy you. You try to stay around them and change them. Uh-uh. Just get away from them. They're, they'll, they will destroy you. Go ahead with verse 6 and 7. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead, lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, Go ahead. ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, ever learning. Go to church every Sunday, never miss a service, and yet never understanding what this Bible is about. The only way that you can know what this Bible is about, if the power of the Holy Spirit resides in you, you must have the Holy Spirit to understand this Bible. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not 
saved. Let me repeat that. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling in you, directing your life day to day, moving you away from these things which it's talking about right here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, praise God, then you are not saved. Now, Brother James, you're not pleasing those 18 years right now. Well, I realize that, and there's a lot of people that I'm offending right now, but if the truth offends, uh, then you're in deep trouble. The truth never offends. You may take offense to the truth because of your doctrine. You may take offense of the truth because of how you've been raised, the way your school teachers taught you, the way professors in college taught you. But the truth never offends. And what we're telling you today is the truth. It even says here, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Folks, if we were walking in where we ought to be, we would be in an uproar. We'd be on the streets carrying signs for Christianity. We'd be marching on the White House with signs. Wow, praise God. Now, let's turn over uh, to uh, Hebrews, I believe is where we're going. Praise God. Verse, uh, chapter 5 of Hebrews. Uh-huh. And let's go to verse 11. Okay. And we desire that every one of you to do show the same diligence to the full. Right. That right. ain't the right one. You want me to read this one right here. <laughs> chapter 5, verse 11. Oh, I'm in verse, uh, chapter 6. Okay. Uh, 11. Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. See, that's what we're talking. They're hard. I, listen, what we're saying to you today is not easy. Uh, this is a hard teaching, praise God. But it, we're trying to teach you. Ears are dull of hearing. Mm. That, see, that's what God said. I'm going to send a delusion to where you won't believe. You've had an opportunity, but you've denied my son, well, Jesus Christ. You can't believe. That's it. They just. They, that's it. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, folks, you cannot believe. Hallelujah. Okay, continue. For when. For the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Notice, and become. You were, when you first got saved, praise God, you were in a position to where you could uh, receive where you wanted to have a, a place with the Lord. But now you have become. When you should have been a teacher in your church. When you should have been a teacher of this scripture in in Sunday school. You now are in need of a teacher yourself. So it's like being in kindergarten your whole life. Yeah. Well, it's it's more like getting up into the sixth grade and then having to go back to kindergarten all over again. Why? Because you've allowed the things of the lust of the world to take away and destroy the truth of Scripture. It made you weak, yeah. And now, instead of being able to teach it, you need to be retaught. So, hallelujah, praise God. Now you have need of meat. You need meat, but you're only able to digest milk. Hmm. You need some strong meat, praise God. I mean, you need to be able... To chew and feel the fulfillment of meat in your whole spiritual walk. Praise God. Let me continue. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Everyone Mm. that useth milk is unskillful in the word of of righteousness. Mm-hmm. See? Yep. If you don't understand, listen folks, if you can't understand this Bible, you're in trouble. If you're a professing Christian. Now here's, and we're going to see this also here in just a moment, praise God. Uh, continue. 
Uh, but, but strong milk belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We've only got about a minute and a half left. Okay. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Folks, sure. we're not going to be able to get into this, but I want to add one thing. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance. In other words, if you profess that you were once saved and you have fallen into the apostasy, you can no longer be saved again. Because what you've done is taken the blood of Jesus and ground it into the dirt. How much time have we got? Praise God. You've got about one minute. Praise the Lord. Folks, pray this with me. Lord, in Jesus' name, forgive me. For I, I, I've sinned. I've fallen away. And I want to renew myself. Praise God to you, Lord. I want to, to turn away from unrighteousness. I want to turn to you, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me because I've followed blind eyes. I've followed itching ears. I've followed lust of this world. And I want to, Lord, I just want to come back. Like the prodigal son, I want to be back in the arms of the Father. Praise God. In Jesus' name, we love you and we'll see you next Next week. week. God bless. Bye-bye.